Come on, I'll buy you a drink, Rosie. Nah, and I'll buy you a shine. Well, yeah, what for? Oh, to go with your manicure. Ah, uh, I know quality when I see it. Even if nobody else on this bloomin' island does. Thank you, Rosie. You know, me last husband died about five years ago, too. Off probably yet. Well, a little late to call in a doctor, isn't it? Right. Ah, go on. I ain't old. <laughs> Come on, Chiro. Thumbs up. Yeah. Well? Go on, you come go. Come go where? Big house. <laughs> well, I appreciate your solicitude for my welfare, Alma, but I'm perfectly happy where I am. Get out of here. Oh, no, big house. Sanderson? Yes, go on, Sanderson. Say, kid, and stop it quick. Blimey. Well, I'm not Sanderson's doctor. Well, I'm not anybody's doctor. Get out of here. Other doctor, you go away today. Oh, so that's it. They don't want me to like, get sick, and then any doctor will do. <laughs> well, you can tell them to go to the devil. You can do. You come. No. You just want the doctor some white people. Give them a chance to sneer at me, eh? Ah, you ain't gonna sit here and let somebody die, are you? All right, Rosie. I'll do what I can. Preservation of the white race. Oh, that's the talk. Oh, 
I had an argument with my heart. Looks as though you lost the argument. Sorry, I'm not hurting you on purpose. Go ahead, Doctor. I can't see The nearest X-ray apparatus is in Singapore. Well, that's a comfort. Looks like a simple fracture, however. Mrs. Sanderson. Have you any bandages in the house? I see. Dr. York again. But let him go on believing. 
Remember those lines written by Rupert Brooke? If I should die, think only this of me. That there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. When he wrote that, I think he must have lived on an island like this. Watch the ships go by like that. And said goodbye to someone as I'm saying goodbye to you. But you'll go on and do great things here. They need men like you. What do you know about men like me? I knew I could believe in you. The first time I saw you. But tell me, what are you running away from? I was a surgeon in London, Diana. Popular, fashionable. Too much so, I guess. I tried to mix cocktails with my surgery. One night I received an emergency call from a dear friend. It was for his only son. I had to operate and... I'd been drinking. The little fellow died in my arms. But I couldn't face it. I thought I was through, so I ran away. And now you've got to climb all the way back. Do you think I can? Why, of course you can. Look what you've done for me is the beginning. Nothing to what you've done for me. Why, oh, I feel as though I'm beginning to learn to walk again. Only you won't be here to help me if I should fall. You mustn't fall, David. Diana. Why must you return to England? For the same reason that you must stay here. To face life. We both have jobs to do. I'd rather you didn't know what my job is. Perhaps someday... Diana. Diana, I must tell you that I... that I love you. Only a man can't come to a woman with empty hands and... an outcast. But when you go back to England, remember that there's some corner in this forgotten man that's forever yours. David, if there were only some way I could help you. There is. When you go to your steamer, walk through the street of the town with me. I want them all to see me with you. So long. Yes. It's so nice. Shall we laugh and be gay about it? It's easier to say goodbye that way. Just as though we're going to see each other again the next day. Yes, David. Let's. Thank 
know, Diana. Leaving for England today? Yes. You know Dr. York, of course. Of course. Major. I hope you have a very pleasant journey. Goodbye, Diana. Goodbye. I'll see you again, Doctor. Major. Diana, pleasant journey. Thanks so much. We do hope you will come back again. Well, of course I will. You know Dr. York, don't you? Well, how do you do, Doctor? All right. Glad to see you, Doctor. Thanks. Goodbye, you two. Goodbye. Take good care of yourselves. Thank oh, you. we do pretty well. <laughs> Bye. Bye. My regards to Leicester Square. Dr. York looks all right to me. Oh, great. Oh, great. Blimey, look at that. What he was going to do with his manicuring after that object goes away. Go on, up it, up it. Uh, put the things on the ship, Roy. Hey, I think not, Diana. That will only make things. More difficult. Thank you for everything you've done. Why, well, I might never have walked, even this far, if it hadn't been for you. You would say that. Goodbye, Diana. Good luck. I'll be standing where we were last night, looking for your boat to go by. Sorry, Doctor, but you know how very urgent it is. Urgent? I didn't say it is urgent. If you told us down the island, we'd be sure to find the right man here. Not only here, but Hudson Smell. Well, I wonder which way we turn now, to the right or the left. Now what? 
，因为你阿妹妹阿妹个太乖嘛，我放开了咯，惊住我来啫。我靠，来来啫。What you talking about? I say, is there a competent doctor in this place? What kind of a doctor? I told you we were on a wild goose chase. Now listen, my good woman. Now don't be a good woman in me. There's the bar. It's a drink you want. Go on, up it, up it. They told us down the other island that there was a good surgeon here. Why didn't you say you wanted a sawbone? Have it your own way. Is he here? No, he ain't been around for a month, worth loving. Well, sick of the devil and any problem. Uh, Rosie. Blimey, I knew you'd be coming back. Good evening, gentlemen. These blokes are looking for a doctor. Not him. Yours, your name? Charles. What can I do for you? I've heard farther down the island that you are quite a good surgeon. I suppose the reports are somewhat exaggerated. You've a degree of medicine, perhaps? Yes, several of them. Really? <laughs> what a perfectly extraordinary place to practice. <laughs> None of that, my good man. I don't suppose that there's anything you can do in this matter, unless perhaps you're a very clever surgeon. Yes, well, what's the trouble? This is Dr. Atkins of the Australian. I am Captain Weatherby. A case of acute. Appendicitis. Probably ruptured by now. The ship's very unsteady and I don't dare bring the patient ashore. In fact, it's a very hopeless case, Doctor. Well, I can't tell very much about it from here, can I? Oh, come on, you two. Oh, off and off. Everyone have a drink. Drink? No. I'll bet you a bottle of champagne I don't die tonight, Doctor. It's an even bet. Temperature's falling. Pulse is 130. We can't do a thing. Why not? We can't operate, sir. We've no adequate facility. It's impossible, Doctor. Impossible. What's impossible? Nothing's impossible. The shake, Doctor. Doctor. Uh, doctor. You, uh... Evidently don't understand that Mr. Sinclair is one of the wealthiest men in England. Well, what of it? You can't just operate on him as though he were a common person. He's terrifically important. Suppose we call out the guard. I'm going to try to remove that appendix. With a little luck, I'll have it out before it breaks and kills you. Now, just help yourself to anything you find inside, Doctor. This is going to be open house. Your responsibility, old chap. Well, that's more nerve than you have, Dr. Atkins. Uh, shall we remove him to the surgery? No. Move the surgery in here. With pleasure. Oh, will you handle the anesthetic? Oh, yeah. I picked her up in one of the islands to look after me. Rather nice, huh? Are you a nurse, Lilaya? I have been in Singapore hospital for three months. Can you give a hypodermic? Yes. Give him a quarter grain of morphine as soon as possible. Get it from Dr. Atkins. And get me a glass of champagne to start the show off right. Tomorrow. Can I depend on that? The bets are still even. Put a record on the gramophone, Lilia. I'm going to have a dance with Lady Luck.
are ready, Doctor. Remember, your responsibility. I understand. I hope every tomorrow isn't as long as the last one. Meaning what? You promised me a glass of champagne tomorrow. Well? Well, that was two weeks ago, and I'm just having it. <laughs> well, you see, I bent this cork shoe taking out your appendix. It's taken them two weeks to straighten it. Well, your cleverness with corkscrews got you Shanghai to England. My cleverness with corkscrews took me out of England. Well, you're going back again in a blaze of glory. <laughs> yes. Whether I want to or not, eh? You're too great a surgeon to rot on those islands. I owe you a great debt, and I'm going to pay it. Well, aren't you going to join me? No, thank you. You should. I'm going to drink to your great success in London. <laughs> I'm a man who makes or breaks, and I'm going to make you the greatest surgeon in England, because you deserve it. Thank you, Sinclair. Mm. Ah. I'm beginning to feel more like myself again. Come here, Lilaria. Now I shall have another glass. In your condition, one's enough. I don't take orders, I give them. And drinking amuses me, so I drink. <laughs> Sometimes when I drink too much, I become quite a different person. And that amuses me too. Because I can watch how the other half lives. Don't overdo. Did you ever taste champagne? No. No? Ah, uh, doctor, I thought the patient would like a bit of a game. What? Right. Only not this kind of a game. Oh! A perfect recovery. Perfect. Shall we stroll? I think we'd better. Maharaja Pinyan will call with reference to the new tea concessions in his province. At 11, your New York representative will call you on the transatlantic phone to make his weekly report. 11.30, directors meeting at the London Westminster. 1 p.m. at luncheon with the Lord Mayor. Splendid, call it. Splendid. <coughs> go right ahead, Donaldson. Go right ahead. I'm listening. At 3 p.m., your trainer regarding your entries in the Derby. At 4 p.m., His Highness Said the Shah of Egypt will call to talk of a loan on Egyptian cotton. Have they started rehearsals yet? As soon as I told them, you'll put up the money. Ah, ah. <coughs> at 4.30... At 4.30... Vivian looks in the pink, doesn't she, ah. Donna? Uh, uh, at 4.30... Oh, she's magnificent. Why don't you pop over to the theater this afternoon? Uh. May I? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Dr. York, please. Oh, yes? Show him right in. That'll be all, Dr. Wilson. You stay here, will you, call us, please? Yes, I want sir. you to meet a friend of mine. Right out. Well, well, hello. Sorry to be a few moments late. I'm not used to getting around London yet. No, I don't suppose you are. I want you to meet Sam Corliss, Dr. York. The greatest press agent in the world meets the world's greatest doctor. How do you do? How are you? You don't look like a good prospect for me. No, no, you're the patient this time. Call us as the doctor. I'm going to turn him loose on you, York. Hmm. What for? Why not? <laughs> I'm nothing to publicize. I'm a surgeon. Very dignified and all that sort of thing. Nonsense. Get your name before the public. I'll have you meet all the very best people. We'll open a fashionable office on Harley Street. We'll look after it, call us. Whether he likes it or not. Oh, he'll like it, all right. I'll look you up tomorrow when I pick out an office. Thank you. I'll tell Vivian you'll be over later. Right. Well, goodbye. Bye, Mr. Corliss. And I'm going to introduce you to the most beautiful creature in London. Really? Mm. And backing her in a show, uh, by way of recreation. Oh. Now, you know something about uh, anatomy. Hmm? Now, tell me, what do you think of this one? Well, there's nothing missing, hmm? except clothes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, we pick her up and take her out to dinner, shall we? As you say. Right. My car's outside. It only takes a few minutes to get down there. Right. Out to you. Thank you. Hello, 
Wir werden. Gordon. Ah. Oh, I'm so glad. That goes for me, too. Let's have a look at you. Hmm? Well, well, I want you to meet the man who saved my life, Dr. York. How do you do? Charles, how about dinner? Let's make it a party. Oh, man. My house? Darling, I don't mind mixing drinks, but mixing with wives. Nonsense. My wife's the great lover of the theatre. Why shouldn't she meet the star of my latest show? She'll get along splendidly. Oh, I think you better go to a nightclub. Oh, my wife's gay, don't you? No. Tomorrow night. Come along. All right. I'll be on my best behavior. Right. Lenny, is my dress ready? Yes, ma'am. You gentlemen mind waiting just two minutes? Two minutes? Well, maybe three. All right. Don't keep it longer than an hour. Oh, no, I won't. Just a minute. Right. Oh, Mary, this is the most marvelous thing. Good evening, Watson. Well, you know, I think that fellow George of this boy makes the best cocktail this afternoon. That's right. Huh? Thank you. Make some cocktails for us, will you, Watson? Try your skill. No, yes. this is the fair way here. Vivian, there's the mirror. Ah. Funny thing about women, the minute they come in the house, they want to go to a mirror. <laughs> they, you know, I'm very interested in women. Uh, that is, pretty women. Age doesn't matter. The most delicious combination I can think of is a pretty woman, good cocktail, or possibly a nice vintage of champagne. Of course, you can have too much of one just as easily as you can have too much of the other. You've got to strike the sort of uh, happy meat. Pardon, madam. This is the snare. Thank you. I brought two nice people for dinner. I wanted to meet the star of my latest theatrical foolishness. Mrs. Sinclair, this is Miss Lawrence. How do you do? Oh, I'm so delighted. And this is Dr. David York, who gets the credit for my being alive and kicking at this moment. How do you do, Doctor? I've heard a great deal about you. May I thank you, too? Really, I... I, I don't pay any attention to his modesty. He's been in the topic. But they aren't modest in the topic. Pictures, I see. Oh. And I've heard a great deal about you, too, Miss Lawrence. Well, I, I hope you don't believe that thing here. Well, I expect coffee out the ready. Can we go in? Oh. What is it? It's about my new song in the first act. Very nice. Hmm. Oh, thanks. Did you uh, find that in a while? Yes. I brought her home as a maid for Mrs. Sinclair. Oh, Mrs. Sinclair. Yes, darling. Mrs. Sinclair. <laughs> Someday I might... David, I was afraid to tell you. Afraid of what it might do to you. And somehow all this seemed so far away. Oh, we were so happy. I didn't want to destroy that. You were afraid I might slip back into what I was when I found you. No, Diana. I would have loved you just the same. But I would never have come back to England. You know, you're still the one who saved me. That goes double, David. 
You saved me, too. Do you know why I ran away and hid myself in those islands? I have an idea. To kill myself? Diana. Oh, yes, so I'd never have to come back here. But... Oh, I, I thought I could do it decently. And no one would ever know the humiliation of my life. And then you came. And your courage gave me courage. Will you help me to go on? Will you help me, Diana? Mm. Ten thirty, Lady Henrietta Pryor. Ah, beautiful back. The Maharaja of Cornpaw. Hindus too, what? Sir George Bernard. Dear old George, his father-in-law just died like he's ill. General Cosmo Slipshot. Slipshot, Slipshot, never heard of him. Mortimer Evans and Mrs. Evans. Oh, yes, I know. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. What a patient. Hasn't had a day's health in her life. Amazing. Oh, I see what a ripping lot of time. My word, and you've only been at it three months. Yes, thanks to Mr. Sinclair's friendship. Ah, uh, ah, uh, let me tell you a joke on Sinclair. Well? He took me along on that cruise as his ship's doctor. Well? He thought I was a surgeon. I'm not. I mean, uh, not positively. Can you keep uh, a secret? <laughs> yes, of course. I'm, uh... I'm an osteopath. <laughs> 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 and he almost died. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a joke on Sinclair if he had, eh? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, finally. Hello? Oh, yes, have a wait, will you? I must be getting along, old chap. Yes, sorry. If any of your patients require osteopathy, uh... Tip for tat. Yes, I'll remember. Goodbye, old boy. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. Well, is this a patient I see before me? You were so long, I got a broken leg waiting for you. Oh, come in and we'll cut it off. <laughs> what a nice office to be sick in, baby. Yes, it's about time you were coming to look us over. How would you like to get away from Doctor today and go to the races? Oh, now don't say no. Looking at horses will be a nice change for you. I couldn't say no to that if I wanted to. Oh, come along. We'll call for Mr. St. Clair at his office. You know, I rather feel like a holiday today. David, the sun is actually shining. You don't say. Hurry, perhaps we'll catch a little of it. Huh? Oh, just a moment. Oh, it's all right, darling. We're calling for Mr. St. Clair. Thank you. We'll have to hurry. Yeah. Pardon me. Well, if it isn't Mrs. St. Clair and a big, handsome doctor. Sorry, I should have not. It seems to me you're rather slow in realizing, aren't you? Hmm? Oh, York. Well, since you seem to be busy, we'll go on to the races. Races, races, certainly, certainly. That's what we're waiting for, isn't it, Vivian? Hmm? We? Certainly we. If I thought you had this engagement with me. Now, just a moment, please. Are you trying to tell me that I can't ask whom I choose, where I choose, and when I choose? Gordon, isn't it degrading enough that I have to entertain this woman at dinner in my home, but that you force me to appear in public with her? Really, I think I'd better go. We'll stay right where you are. And be insulted? Certainly not. No one's going to insult you. Mrs. St. Clair's going to apologize. Gordon, if you haven't any respect for me, at least you must respect my position as your wife. As my wife, I refuse to allow you to insult my guest. You'll apologize to Miss Lawrence. No, Gordon. You've done this to me too often. And through apologizing to anyone. I insist. Oh. Just a minute, St. Clair, that's enough. This is no affair of yours. Well, in your present condition, I'm making it my affair. Or when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. I'll ask for it, and I'll pay for it, too. Please, this is so humiliating. I'm sorry, Miss Lawrence. I apologize. Well? Two hundred and ten. What of it? 
Well, nothing, except if you continue your present mode of living, it'll go through the roof. That means a stroke. Are you telling me this is a doctor or as a friend who doesn't approve of my way of living? It's a doctor. And after a thorough examination, I'll tell you something else. You're using drugs in addition to alcohol. You're very clever, aren't you, doctor? Not at all. Since you sent for me as a doctor, I'll tell you the truth about yourself, whether you like it or not. I know. My heart's bad. My blood pressure's too high. I've got to give up drinking and eat spinach. And yet too much of that? Or one more scene of violent anger like yesterday's, and you'll be snuffed out like that. I was rotten yesterday. I hope you've forgiven me, York, like a good fellow. I'm hardly the one to forgive you. Listen, Doctor, this is in the nature of a confession. I can't do without liquor. I must have it. And yet, when I'm drinking, I'm rotten, I'm cruel, I'm morally blind. Understand? Yes. That's what caused all the trouble yesterday. Heaven knows I didn't want to hurt Diana, but I can't explain it to her. No, I think not. Well, but you could. You're a doctor, and she thinks you're great. Oh. <laughs> you want me to go to her and make excuses for you on medical grounds, when the only trouble is you haven't decency to live properly. Well, you can put it that way if you like. I'm sorry, Sinclair, but I have too much respect for your wife. Well, what about me? Of course, I only brought you from the South Seas and put you up in Holly Street. I didn't ask you to, did I? No. Well, if you're not for me, I take it you're against me. Frankly, I am. I must say you're an extremely ungrateful man. <laughs> you didn't think that the night you sent for me to come aboard your boat? Well, I gave you what little skill I have, in return for which you brought me back to London and set me up in a fashionable office. From now on, I'm on my own, Sinclair. I owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. All right, all right. You saved my life on the boat, and I brought you back to London. We're quit. Right. Good night. Good night. David. I am. David, I'm going away. What? I don't know, I don't know, but I'm going. I can't stand it here another day. Would it make it any easier if I were out of the way? Oh, no, David. Why, without you, everything would be empty. But I'm young. I have some right to happiness. Of course. I'll come to you whenever you send for me, Diana. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Diana, I've been looking for you. What is it, Gordon? I thought... I thought maybe you'd come in and have a little chat with me. I want so much to be forgiven. I can't, Gordon. I can't forgive you. Well, you know I wasn't myself yesterday. I told you how sorry I was. Oh, it's too easy for you to say that. You can be very nice to Dr. York. Why not to me? I respect Dr. York. So I've noticed. Well, you won't... Why? Oh, so you are interested in him, are you? Well, just for that, I'm going to break him. Oh, no, Gordon. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. Why not? Why, because... Because he... Because you love him, is that it? Because you love him! I should have left him to drink himself to death on that island with those natives. He wasn't with an angel. How do you know that? Oh, I see. I'm beginning to remember now. You went down to the South Seas. I suppose you met him down there. Yes. What a blind fool I've been. Well, when I get through with him, there won't be much left of him for you to want. There's nothing you can do to him, Gordon. Nothing. Nothing. I made him and I'll break him. I'll put him out of London. I'll make his name a laughing stock. I'll drive him back to those islands and let him rot. That's what I'll do with him.
Hello? Oh, yes. David, I want you to come right back. Yes, please. Gordon. Well, I'd rather you call another doctor, Diana. No, I want you, David. Please. It's serious. Oh, well, I'll be right over then. Yes. Uh, where is Mrs. Sinclair? bottle of champagne. I live to break you, you liar. Pardon me, doctor. Heart? Yes. I want to call Dr. Merton, a heart specialist. There's a chance, a bad chance. How are you? Betting now, Doctor. Save your money. <laughs> May I use the telephone? Yes, I'll show you. Thank you. Uh, Haymarket, 0626. Yes, please. Dr. York speaking. Uh, Dr. Merton, please. But where can I reach him? Thank you. Uh, Haymarket, 5107. Yes. Nothing more we can do. Put yourself together. Come on, dear. All right. I think you'd better leave the details of this to me, Diana. I'll be all right. I want you to stay in your room and don't talk to anyone. I'll inform the servants and the newspaper man. You need rest. I'll sign the certificate in the morning. Heart failure. Come here.
yourself out of a job. They were so well yesterday. You couldn't die like this unless... Unless what? She can't do this to me. I won't let her. What are you talking about? You'll see. Carry my help. What are you going to do? You'll see. I'm going to the police. Hello, York. Pardon my being here like this. Quite all right, Doctor. You've been away several days, haven't you? Yes, Devonshire Coast. I needed a holiday. I know. I'm afraid you're in difficulty. Really? Your professional reputation is at stake. I came here to tell you as a friend. Thanks. They've exhumed the body of St. Clair. You signed the death certificate in good faith, didn't you? Of course. It was heart failure. And you know that he was poison. Certainly not. That woman, Miss Lawrence, made some ugly remarks to the police. Why, it's preposterous. Yes, yes, I know, but still they found the poison. Thanks. Thanks for telling me. Of course, I know that you knew nothing about it. Merely warning you that perhaps it would be a good idea for you to get out of town. Well, what are they going to do? Can't imagine. Probably arrest Mrs. Sinclair and ask you a lot of silly questions. Thanks, I'll be prepared. There's anything I can do? No. You know where to find me. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Watson. What's the news, sir? I let Miss Sinclair know you're here, sir. Oh, Diana. I'm so glad you've come back, David. Yes, I thought I'd better. Why, has anything happened? No. But I want us both to get out of all this, Diana. I'm going to take you back to the islands with me. Tonight. Tonight? Yes, why not? There's nothing to keep you here in England any longer. There's a boat leaving Southampton tonight. By tomorrow, we'll be well on our way to a new life. Now, come on, pack your things. Please, dear, I... Watson. I'll answer it myself. Very good, sir. Suppose you wait here, dear. Good day, Doctor. How do you do? I'm sorry, Mrs. Sinclair. I have a warrant. For whom? For you. I must ask you to come along with me. But what have I done? The charge is murder. I must warn you that anything you may say may be used as evidence against you. I'll send you a And you do know that Saison is a deadly poison? Yes. And you've heard the testimony of the court that over two grams of this deadly poison were found in the body of your husband? Yes. And that you were the only person with him when he died? Yes. Would you mind telling the court how this poison got into your husband's body? I don't know. You don't know? You heard one of your servants testify earlier in the day that he overheard you say to one of your guests, I could kill Mr. Sinclair. Perhaps you overheard it too. You were my guest that evening. But you meant it. The wish to kill your husband was father to the deed. I tell you no. Sorry, Mrs. Sinclair, but these questions must be answered. If your lordship please, my client is entirely within her rights in saying she doesn't know. No amount of browbeating on the part of King's counsel can make her say otherwise. I want the truth. How do you know that you haven't got it? Gentlemen. 
Do I appear to be robbing you, Mrs. Sinclair? Not any more than you have done at my dinner table, Sir Robert. Then you must be quite used to it. We'll continue. <clears throat> did you ever possess any of this faisan? Yes. Where did you get it? I bought it. Where? In Singapore. Long time ago. Then you had been planning this murder for some time? No, no. Then what were you going to do with it? Kill myself. I'm wrong. Silence! What made you reconsider? Oh, what difference does it make? Why I didn't? It was about that time that you met Dr. York, wasn't it? Yes. You fell in love with Dr. York. And you're still in love with him, aren't you? Yes. And instead of killing yourself, you... Your Lordship. I beg your pardon, my lord. I was merely endeavouring to prove that the poison was used. Mr. Sinclair, will you please tell counsel what you did with the say song after you purchased it? Well, I had intended to use it on myself. But I didn't. I... I even forgot I had it until I returned to England. And then one day after a quarrel with my husband, I remember. And I never saw the bottle again. Did you look for it? Yes. No trace of it? No. Yes. The poison was found in the body of Gordon Sinclair. And it must have been in the room while you were there, wasn't it? I don't know. I... I yes or no? Well, I suppose so. Of course, the thing to do then was to destroy the little bottle. Put it where nobody could find it. Not even the police who came to search the room. That's what you did, isn't it? No, 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 I tell you, I, I never saw the bottle again. Your witness. Your witness. Call Dr. Herbert Atkins. Dr. Herbert Atkins? Will you take the stand, please, Doctor? Delighted. The evidence you are about to give in this case between our sovereign law of the King and the accused of the bar shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. It's book you. Dr. Atkins, I have here the ship's papers of the officer left. In them, you figure as ship surgeon to Mr. Sinclair on his last trip of inspection to his plantations in the South Pacific. Is that correct? Yes. A jolly trip, too. Yes, I have no doubt. Uh, did you ever examine Mr. Sinclair's heart? Yes. What did you find? Well, you see, the yacht's engines were throbbing and his heart was bumping. I couldn't tell whether the ship's engines were missing or Sinclair's heart was skipping. Most confusing, you know. <laughs> Silence! Hmm. Tell me, were there any women on board this yacht? Well, uh, not in the strict sense of the word. What do you mean by that? That was a Malay girl. Ah, ah, brought on board by Mr. Sinclair. She was supposed to be a nurse. Supposed to be? What convinced you that she wasn't? The way she gave a hypodermic. Hypodermic? Of what? Morphine. Was he in the habit of taking morphine? I couldn't say exactly. Did you ever notice any undue familiarity between Mr. Sinclair and this supposed nurse? Must I answer that, my lord? You must. 
You said all. Well, I uh, saw him strike her. He hit her? Not exactly. It was a cross between a pat and a smack. Uh, she didn't mind. <laughs> Silence. That will be all. Thank you. Dr. David York. Dr. David York. evidence you are about to give in this case between our sovereign law, the king, and the accused of the past shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You signed the death certificate of uh, Mr. Gordon Sinclair, I believe. Yes. You believed the cause of death to be heart failure. You did it in good faith and with good intentions. Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Lordship. When you arrived at the bedside of Mr. Sinclair the night you were summoned, was he conscious? Uh, partly. You examined him and found him suffering from heart disease? Yes. Where was Mrs. Sinclair? He was there. You then left and went across the hall to telephone for a heart specialist. Is that correct? Yes. Did Mrs. Sinclair go with you? She showed me the telephone and returned to her husband's bedside. When you got back, Sinclair was dead. Well, Mrs. Sinclair... Yes or no? Yes. Mrs. Sinclair was with her husband while you were telephoning. You were recalled to that room by her scream. Yes. May I ask you a little question about this poison, say so? It acts very quickly, doesn't it? Yes. Let us say a couple of minutes. Well, that, that depends on... Yes or no? Yes. As a well-known surgeon, as a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, do you mean to say that you wouldn't know whether a man had been poisoned or not? Wouldn't you swear that you didn't immediately suspect poisoning when you examined Sinclair? I had suspected that Mr. Sinclair was using drugs for some time. What kind of drugs? Morphine, probably. Then why did you issue a certificate for heart failure? And here's an expert witness. You asked me if I suspected poisoning. I tell you that I gave a certificate that death was due to heart failure. If I was wrong, I'm ready to be judged for my incompetence. And now you know that you were wrong. Did you issue a false certificate to protect someone? Whom should I protect? The prisoner in the dock, perhaps. I see no need for that. Perhaps you will deny it that you're very fond of Mrs. Sinclair. I don't deny it. Are you in love with her? I am. I suggest that you deliberately gave a false certificate because you loved this woman. You knew she had poisoned her husband and you tried to conceal the facts because you hoped to marry her and share in the Sinclair fortune. That's a lie. You will not be pleased. Silence! Control your temper, sir. Oh. No more questions, Your Lordship. The court will adjourn until 2 p.m. Sir Henry, what's your opinion? I'm afraid it's going against us. But isn't there something different we can try? A new witness is anything. I'm sorry, I, uh... Have you any suggestions? Well... What about the service? Isn't it possible that Watson or 
That melee girl, Lemaya. Yeah. I think it's worth trying. Sir Henry, will you call the Sinclair residence in about 15 minutes? Speak to Lilia. Tell her that, uh, how do you want to put her on the witness stand this afternoon? Give her the impression that you're suspicious of her. Yes, but if she does know something, won't that frighten her? Exactly. Do as I ask and I'll explain later. I'll see you before court reconvenes. Very well. Uh, good luck. Answer my question. Did you kill Gordon Sinclair? No, I didn't kill him. But you gave him a drug every night? Yes. And you knew that you were breaking the law? Yes. He paid me and I didn't want to tell anybody. Why did you go to Gordon Sinclair's rooms today? Because I wanted to get away from here. I wanted to go back to my own people. There's too much trouble here for me. I don't want any trouble. Yes, 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 but why did you go to his rooms today? Get something. You left there before you ran away. Yes. The drug. You used to give him. That was it, wasn't it? Yes. Where did you hide them? Tell the court, please. In the bedroom. In the bedroom. Did anyone else know that? No, no. Look at that bottle. Did you ever see it before? Yes, I have. Did you put that in the bedpost? No, I did not. Then how did it get in there? I don't know. Maybe Mr. St. Clair put it there sometime. Did you ever give a tablet out of this bottle to Mr. St. Clair by mistake? Oh, no. That's not good. Then who did? I didn't give it to him. I didn't give it to him. Oh, no, no. I'll tell you. I was listening at the door. Dr. York came to Mr. St. Clair's room. Even. I'll fool him. 
I'll get well tomorrow. I'll bet you a bottle of champagne. <laughs> Passage on an old tramp steamer. It'll take us forever to get to the island. I won't mind that. Will you? The important. Suppose we call out the guard. I'm going to try to remove that appendix. With a little luck, I'll have it out before it breaks and kills you. No. Just help yourself to anything you find inside, Doctor. This is going to be open house. Your responsibility, old chap. Well, that's more nerve than you have, Doctor Atkins. Uh, shall we remove him to the surgery? No. Move the surgery in here. With pleasure. Will you handle the anesthetic? Ah, yeah. I picked her up in one of the islands to look after me. Rather nice, huh? Are you a nurse, Lilia? I have been in Singapore hospital for three months. Can you give a hypodermic? Yes. Give him a quarter grain of morphine as soon as possible. Get it from Dr. Atkins. And get me a glass of champagne to start the show off right. Tomorrow. Can I depend on that? The bets are still even. I put a record on the gramophone, Lilia. I'm going to have a dance with Lady Luck. Oh. Tomorrow isn't as long as the last one. Meaning what? You promised me a glass of champagne tomorrow. Well? Well, that was two weeks ago, and I'm just having it. <laughs> well, you see, I bent this cork through taking out your appendix. It's taken them two weeks to straighten it. Well, your cleverness with corkscrews got you Shanghai to England. My cleverness with corkscrews took me out of England. Well, you're going back. I'll inform the servants and the newspaper man. You need rest. I'll sign the certificate in the morning. Heart failure. Come here.
job. He played so well yesterday. He couldn't die like this unless... Unless what? She can't do this to me. I won't let her. What are you talking about? You'll see. Mary, my help. What are you going to do? You'll see. I'm going to the police. Hello, York. Pardon my being here like this. Quite all right, Doctor. You've been away several days, haven't you? Yes, Devonshire Coast. I needed a holiday. I know. I'm afraid you're in difficulty. Really? Your professional reputation is at stake. I came here to tell you as a friend. Thanks. They've exhumed the body of St. Clair. You signed the death certificate in good faith, didn't you? Of course. It was heart failure. And you know that he was Poison. Certainly not. That woman, Miss Lawrence, made some ugly remarks to the police. Why, it's preposterous. Yes, yes, I know, but still they found the poison. Thanks. Thanks for telling me. Of course, I know that you knew nothing about it. Merely warning you that perhaps it would be a good idea for you to get out of town. Well, what are they going to do? Can't imagine probably arrest Mrs. Sinclair and ask you a lot of silly questions. Sorry to give me so much trouble, Doctor. But I had an argument with my heart. Looks as though you lost the argument. Sorry, I'm not hurting you on purpose. Go ahead, Doctor. The nearest X-ray apparatus is in Singapore. I like the comfort. Looks like a simple fracture, however. Mrs. Sanderson. Have you any bandages in the house? I see. Not bad. How much? Three pounds. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> Tell that to your ancestors. Very good. I had to go to Singapore with them. Look at it. I thought I was through, so I ran away. And now you've got to climb all the way back. You think I can? Why, of course you can. Look what you've done for me at the beginning. Nothing to what you've done for me. Well, I feel as though I'm beginning to learn to walk again. Only you won't be here to help me if I should fall. 
You mustn't fall, David. Diana, why must you return to England? For the same reason that you must stay here. To face life. We both have jobs to do. I'd rather you didn't know what my job is. Perhaps someday... Diana. Diane, I must tell you that I... that I love you. Only a man can't come to a woman with empty hands and... an outcast. But when you go back to England, remember that there's some corner in this forgotten man that's forever yours. David, if there were only some way I could help you. There is. When you go to your steamer, walk through the street of the town with me. I want them all to see me with you. They are? Yes. It's so nice. Shall we laugh and be gay about it? It's easier to say goodbye that way. Just as though we're going to see each other again the next day. Yes, David. Let's. Goodbye, Diana. Goodbye. I'll see you again, Doctor. Major. Ah, uh, Diana. Pleasant journey. Thanks so much. We do hope you will come back again. Why, of course I will. You know Dr. York, don't you? How do you do, Doctor? All right. Glad to see you, Doctor. Thanks. Goodbye, you two. Goodbye. Take good care of yourselves. Oh, we did pretty well. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. My regards to Leicester Square. Dr. York looks all right for me. First rate. First rate. Blimey, look at that. What he was going to do is manicuring after that object goes away. Well, there. Hey, you know, I'm very interested in women. Uh, that is, pretty one. Age doesn't matter. The most delicious combination I can think of is a pretty woman, good cocktail, or possibly a nice vintage of champagne. Of course, you can have too much of one just as easily as you can have too much of the other. You've got to strike the sort of uh, happy meat. Pardon me, madam. This is the player. Thank you. I brought two nice people for dinner. I wanted to meet the star of my latest theatrical foolishness. Mrs. Sinclair, this is Miss Lawrence. How do you do? Oh, I'm so delighted. And this is Dr. David York, who gets the credit for my being alive and kicking at this moment. How do you do, Doctor? I've heard a great deal about you. May I thank you? Really, I... I, I don't pay any attention to his modesty. He's been in the topic. But they aren't modest in the topic. Oh. And I've heard a great deal about you, too, Miss Lawrence. Oh. Well, I, I hope you don't believe that. Right, the coffee are ready. Can we go in? Uh, find that in a while? 
Yes. I brought her home as a maid for Mrs. Sinclair. Oh, Mrs. Sinclair. Yes, darling. Mrs. Sinclair. Take you back to the islands with me tonight. Tonight? Yes, why not? There's nothing to keep you here in England any longer. There's a boat leaving Southampton tonight. By tomorrow, we'll be well on our way to a new life. Now, come on, pack your things. Please, dear. I... Watson. I'll answer it myself. Very good, sir. Good day, Doctor. How do you do? I'm sorry, Mrs. Sinclair. I have a warrant. For whom? For you. I must ask you to come along with me. But what have I done? The charge is murder. I must warn you that anything you may say may be used as evidence against you. And you do know that Saison is a deadly poison? Yes. And you've heard the testimony of the court that over two grams of this deadly poison were found in the body of your husband? Yes. And that you were the only person with him when he died? Yes. Would you mind telling the court how this poison got into your husband's body? I don't know. You don't know? You heard one of your servants testify earlier in the day that he overheard you say to one of your guests, I could kill Mr. Sinclair. Perhaps you overheard it, too. You were my guest that evening. But you meant it. The wish to kill your husband was father to the deed. I tell you, no. Sorry, Mrs. Sinclair, but these questions must be answered. If your lordship please, my client is entirely within her rights in saying she doesn't know. No amount of browbeating on the part of King's counsel can make her say otherwise. I want the truth. How do you know that you haven't got it, gentlemen? Do I appear to be proud of you, Mrs. Sinclair? Not any more than you have done at my dinner table, Sir Robert. Come on, cheer up. Thumbs up. Look. That's your brother, Mabel. Yeah. Well? Go on, you can go. Come go away. Because. <laughs> well. I appreciate your solicitude for my welfare, Arthur, but I'm perfectly happy where I am. Get out of here. Oh, no, big house. Doctor Yes, Warner Sanderson, say kid and doctor quick. Blimey. Well, I'm not Sanderson's doctor. Well, I'm not anybody's doctor. Get out of here. Other oh, doctor, you go away, do they? Oh, so that's it. They don't want me to like get sick, and then any doctor will do. <laughs> Well, you can tell him to go to the devil. What can I do? You come. No. Here's a chance for doctors from white people. Give him a chance to sneer at me, eh? Ah, you ain't gonna sit here and let somebody die, are you? All right, Rosie. I'll do what I can for the preservation of the white race. Ah, oh, that's the talk.
right on the rock where you're going. Then why did you issue a certificate for heart failure? I'm here as an expert witness. You asked me if I suspected poisoning. I tell you that I gave a certificate that death was due to heart failure. If I was wrong, I'm ready to be judged for my incompetence. And now you know that you were wrong. Did you issue a false certificate to protect someone? Who should I protect? The prisoner in the dock, perhaps. I see no need for that. Perhaps you will deny it that you're very fond of Mrs. Sinclair. I don't deny it. Are you in love with her? I am. I suggest that you deliberately gave a false certificate because you loved this woman. You knew she had poisoned her husband and you tried to conceal the facts because you hoped to marry her and share in the Sinclair fortune. That's a lie. You will not be pleased. Pull your temper, sir. Oh, no more questions, Your Lordship. The court will adjourn until 2 p.m. your opinion. I'm afraid it's going against us. But isn't there something different we can try? New witnesses, anything. I'm sorry, I, uh, have you any suggestions? Well, what about the servants? Isn't it possible that Watson or that Malay girl, Elia? Elia. Elia. I think it's worth trying. Sir Henry. You call the Sinclair residence in about 15 minutes. Speak to Lilia. Tell her that, uh, tell her you want to put her on the witness stand this afternoon. Give her the impression that you're suspicious of her. Yes, but if she does know something, won't that frighten her? Exactly. Do as I ask and I'll explain later. I'll see you before court reconvenes. Very well. Uh, good luck. A new witness is anything. I'm sorry, I, uh, have you any suggestions? Well, what about the servants? Isn't it possible that Watson or that Malay girl, Elia? Elia. Elia. I think it's worth trying. Sir Henry, will you call the Sinclair residence in about 15 minutes? Speak to Elia. Tell her that, uh, Tell her you want to put her on the witness stand this afternoon. Give her the impression that you're suspicious of her. Yes, but if she does know something, won't that frighten her? Exactly. Do as I ask and I'll explain later. I'll see you before court reconvenes. Very well. Uh, good luck.
Answer my question. Did you kill Gordon Sinclair? No, I didn't kill him. But you gave him a drug every night? Yes. And you knew that you were breaking the law? Yes. He paid me, and I didn't want to tell anybody. Does it? A what? Morphine. Was he in the habit of taking morphine? I couldn't say exactly. Did you ever notice any undue familiarity between Mr. Sinclair and this supposed nurse? Must I answer that, my lord? You must. You sit all. Well, I, uh, saw him strike her. He hit her? Not exactly. It was a cross between a pat and a smack. Uh, she didn't mind. <laughs> Silence. That will be all. Thank you. Dr. David Yard. Dr. David Yard. Evidence you are about given in this case between our sovereign law, the king, and the accused of the bar shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. You signed the death certificate of uh, Mr. Gordon Sinclair, I believe. Yes. You believe the cause of death to be heart failure. You did it in good faith and with good intention. Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Lordship. When you arrived at the bedside of Mr. Sinclair the night you were summoned, was he conscious? Uh, partly. You examined him and found him suffering from heart disease? Yes. Where was Mrs. Sinclair? He was there. You then left and went across the hall to telephone for a heart specialist. Is that correct? Yes. Did Mrs. Sinclair go with you? She showed me the telephone and returned to her husband's bedside. When you got back, Sinclair was dead. Well, Mrs. Sinclair... Yes or no? Yes. Mrs. Sinclair was with her husband while he was telephoning. You were recalled to that room by her scream. Yes. May I ask you a little question about this poison, say so? It acts very quickly, doesn't it? Yes. The law of the king and the accused of the bar shall be the truth, the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help you God. It's book you. Dr. Atkins, I have here the ship's papers of the Yoxy list. In them you figure as ship's surgeon to Mr. Sinclair. On his last trip of inspection to his plantations in the South Pacific, is that correct? Yes. A jolly trip, too. Yes, I have no doubt. Uh, did you ever examine Mr. Sinclair's heart? Yes. What did you find? Well, you see, the yacht's engines were throbbing, and his heart was bumping. I couldn't tell whether the ship's engines were missing, or Sinclair's heart was skipping. Most confusing, you know. <laughs> Silence! Hmm. Tell me, were there any women on board this yacht? Well, uh, not in the strict sense of the word. What do you mean by that? There was a Malay girl. Ah, ah, brought on board by Mr. Sinclair. She was supposed to be a nurse. Supposed to be? What convinced you that she was? The way she gave a hypodermic. Hypodermic? A what? Morphine. Was he in the habit of taking morphine? I couldn't say exactly. Did you ever notice any undue familiarity between Mr. Sinclair and this supposed nurse? Must I answer that, my lord? You must. 
You sit all. Well, I uh, saw him strike her. He hit her? Not exactly. It was a cross between a pat and a smack. Uh, she didn't mind. <laughs> Silence. That will be all. Thank you. Dr. David Yard. Dr. David Yard. Evidence you are about to give in this case, the being our sovereign law, the king, and the accused of the bar, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You sang... Like it. Charming. What is it? So that's my new song, in the first act. It's very nice. Well, hmm. oh, thanks. Did you, uh, find that in a while? Yes. I brought her home as a maid from Mrs. Sinclair. Oh, Mrs. Sinclair. Yes, darling. Mrs. Sinclair. that you left me there to dream of you, hoping that someday I might... David, I was afraid to tell you. Afraid of what it might do to you. And somehow all this seemed so far away. Oh, we were so happy. I didn't want to destroy that. You were afraid I might slip back into what I was when I found you. No, Diana. I would have loved you just the same. But I would never have come back to England. You know, you're still the one who saved me. That goes double, David. You saved me, too. Do you know why I ran away and hid myself in those islands? I have an idea. To kill myself? Diana. Oh, yes, so I'd never have to come back here. But... Oh, I, I thought I could do it decently. And no one would ever know the humiliation of my life. And then you came. And your courage gave me courage. Will you help me to go on? Will you help me, Diana? Ten thirty, Lady Henrietta Pryor. Ah, beautiful back. The Maharaja of Corn Poor. Hindus too, what? Sir George Bernard. Dear old George, his father in law just died, Lucky Devil. General Cosmo Slipshot, 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 never heard of him. Mortimer Evans and Mrs. Evans. Oh, yes, I know. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. What a patient. Hasn't had a day's health in her life. Amazing. Oh, I say, what a ripping lot of time. My word, and you've only been at it three months. Yes, thanks to Mr. Sinclair's friendship. Ah, uh, ah, uh, let me tell you a joke on Sinclair. When you see the yacht's engines were throbbing, and his heart was bumping. I couldn't tell whether the ship's engines were missing or Sinclair's heart was skipping. Most confusing, you know. <laughs> Silence! Hmm. Tell me, were there any women on board this yacht? Well, uh, not in the strict sense of the word. What do you mean by that? There was a Malay girl. Ah, ah, brought on board by Mr. Sinclair. She was supposed to be a nurse. Supposed to be. What convinced you that she was? The way she gave a hypodermic. Hypodermic? Of what? Morphine. 
What, he is the habit of taking marking? I couldn't say exactly. Did you ever notice any undue familiarity between Mr. Sinclair and this supposed nurse? Must I answer that, my lord? You must. You said all. Well? I, uh, saw him strike her. He hit her? Not exactly. It was a cross between a pat and a smack. Oh, she didn't mind. <laughs> Silence! That will be all. Thank you. Dr. David Yard. Dr. David Yard. Evidence you are about given in this case between our sovereign law, the king, and the accused of the past shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. You signed the death certificate of uh, Mr. Gordon Sinclair, I believe. Yes. You believed the cause of death to be heart failure. You did it in good faith and with good intention. Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Lordship. When you arrived at the bedside of Mr. Sinclair the night you were summoned, was he conscious? Uh, partly. You examined him and found him suffering from heart disease? Yes. Where was Mrs. Sinclair? He was there. <laughs> I think you'd better leave the details of this to me, Diana. I'll be all right. I'm all right. I want you to stay in your room and don't talk to anyone. I'll inform the servants and the newspaper men. You need rest. I'll sign the certificate in the morning. Heart failure. Come here. Hello, York. Pardon my being here like this. Quite all right, Doctor. You've been away several days, haven't you? Yes, Devonshire Coast. I needed a holiday. I know. I'm afraid you're in difficulty. Really? Your professional reputation is at stake. I came here to tell you as a friend. Thanks. They've exhumed the body of St. Clair. You signed the death certificate in good faith, didn't you? Of course. It was heart failure. And you know that he was poisoned? Certainly 
not that woman. Miss Lawrence made some ugly remarks to the police. Why? Preposterous. Yes, yes, I know, but still they found the poison. Thanks. Thanks for telling me. Of course, I know. There, before you ran away. Yes. The drug. You used to give him. That was it, wasn't it? Yes. Where did you hide them? Tell the court, please. In the bedroom. In the bedroom. Did anyone else know that? No, no. Look at that bottle. Did you ever see it before? Yes, I have. Did you put that in the bedpost? No, I did not. Then how did it get in there? I don't know. Maybe Mr. St. Clair put it there sometime. Did you ever give a tablet out of this bottle to Mr. St. Clair by mistake? Oh, no. That's not good. Then who did? I didn't give it to him. I didn't give it to him. Oh, no, no. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I was listening at the door. Dr. Yor came to Mr. St. Clair's room. Dr. Yor, please. Dr. Yor, It's worth trying. Sir Henry, will you call the Sinclair residence in about 15 minutes? Speak to Lilia. Tell her that, uh, tell her you want to put her on the witness stand this afternoon. Give her the impression that you're suspicious of her. Yes, but if she does know something, won't that frighten her? Exactly. Do as I ask and I'll explain later. I'll see you before court reconvenes. Very well. Uh, good luck. Thank you. 
Answer my question. Did you kill Gordon Sinclair? No, I didn't kill him. But you gave him a drug every night. Yes. And you knew that you were breaking the law. Yes. He paid me, and I didn't want to tell anybody. Why did you go to Gordon Sinclair's rooms today? Because I wanted to get away from here. I wanted to go back to my own people. There's too much trouble here for me. I don't want any trouble. Yes, yes, yes. But why did you go to his rooms today? Get something. You left there before you ran away. Yes. The drug you used to give him. Life's full of little surprises, isn't it? Now you know everything that I couldn't tell you on the island. That you left me. I had a dream of you, hoping that someday I might... David, I was afraid to tell you. Afraid of what it might do to you. Somehow all this seemed so far away. Oh, we were so happy. I didn't want to destroy that. You were afraid I might slip back into what I was when I found you. No, Diana. I would have loved you just the same. But I would never come back to England. You know, you're still the one who saved me, Diana. That goes double, David. You saved me, too. Do you know why I ran away and hid myself in those islands? I have an idea. To kill myself? Diana, Oh, yes, so I'd never have to come back here. But... Oh, I... I thought I could do it decently. And no one would ever know the humiliation of my life. And then you came. And your courage gave me courage. Will you help me to go on? Will you help me, Diana? Ten thirty, Lady Henrietta Pryor. Ah, beautiful back. The Maharaja of Corn Poor. Hindus too, what? To George Bernard. Dear old George, his father-in-law just died, Mackie Devil. General Cosmo Slipshot. Slipshot, Slipshot, never heard of him. Mortimer Evans and Mrs. Evans. Oh, yes, I know. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. What a patient. Hasn't had a day's health in her life. Amazing. Oh, I see what a ripping lot of time. My word, and you've only been at it three months. Yes, thanks to Mr. Sinclair's friendship. Ah, uh, ah, uh, let me tell you a joke on Sinclair. Well? He took me along on that cruise as his ship's doctor. Well? He thought I was a surgeon. I'm not. I mean, uh, not positively. Can you keep uh, a secret? <laughs> yes, of course. I'm, uh... I'm an osteopath. <laughs> 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 and he almost died. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a joke on Sinclair if he had, eh? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, finally. Hello? Oh, yes, have a wait, will you? I must be getting along, old chap. Yes, sorry. If any of your patients require osteopathy, uh, tip for tap. Yes, I'll remember. Goodbye, old boy. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. Oh. Well, is this the patient I see before me? You were so long, I got a broken leg waiting for you. Oh, come in and we'll cut it off. <laughs>